load here. And um, everything still look okay, AJ, screen-wise? Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Perfect. All right, so uh, just a quick recap. Uh, I'm, I'm Nick Kuhn, and I do product marketing, marketing engineering, or uh, what we used to call tech marketing uh, for uh, Tainzu platform and Tainzu platform for Cloud Foundry. You know, we used to we used to call this thing uh, Tainzu application service as well. And way back in the day, it used to be called Pivotal Cloud Foundry. So uh, for those uh, for those folks out there who who may know know, know the various names, uh, you know that we're going to be covering updates. Uh, what's new in, in uh, for that today? So, and as you can see, uh, this is an Explore themed presentation. This is actually going to be a slightly modified version of uh, one of the sessions I delivered uh, last uh, last week, I believe. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, um, yeah. So just a quick disclaimer: um, we have some some beta functionality in this uh, presentation, and some you know kind of forward future facing items as well. Obviously, uh, that's always subject to change. So this is our just our standard disclaimer. And if we really look into uh, what what is Tanzu, and we kind of to di dive in, dive into that a little bit deeper, uh, what I like to just reinforce with everyone, uh, VMware Tanzu is a lot more than just a Kubernetes distribution. It's a suite, or a portfolio of, of products, ranging from multiple application platforms that consist of what we call Tanzu Platform. We have the Tanzu Data Suite, so we have multiple data services like Postgres, MySQL, Gemfire, Greenplum. Uh, that offer a, a wide array of data services to customers. Uh, we have Tanzu Cloud Health, which is a, a, a great uh, cloud financial operations tool uh, to, to help control your, your cloud spend. And, you know, uh, we also have what we call the Tanzu Application Catalog, which is powered by, uh, you know, very popular, uh, the very popular open source uh, Bitnami uh, project as well. So just, uh, you know, we have a lot of Skill skill sets skill sets across the board, and then you know, last but not least, we are the stewards and maintainers of the Spring uh, Java uh, framework, which is the number one Java framework and a, a huge uh, Java ecosystem. And actually, last last week also at Explore, we we also hosted Spring One as well. Uh, they had a, a live track, a live kind of presentation going all week, and I'll almost all of those sessions were live streamed and recorded as well. So if you want to check out any of the spring sessions, uh, you can go, you know, sp uh, spring.io uh, and get, get the links to all those, all that great uh, Java and spring content out there as well. And then if we kind of deep dive into what we're going to be focusing on today, uh, you know, Tanzu is focused on, you know, develop, operate, and optimize the Tanzu platform. We'll be, we'll be diving into different components of that, but also we have, Tanzu Data and Tanzu Labs um, as well. Uh, if you uh, need to augment any of that and uh, shout out to Labs, uh, it's a great way to you know uh, help get kick started on building some of these newer applications that you'll be seeing later around you know generative AI use cases and things like that. So we have we have a team of people that can come in and help you uh, get started building your first uh, generative AI type of applications as well if if you need help there. Uh, and then just a quick recap. So we'll be deep diving a little bit more specifically on Tanzu Platform for Cloud Foundry, which is one of the runtimes of Tanzu Platform. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, Tanzu Platform for Cloud Foundry, it's based on the open source Cloud Foundry project, which is uh, you know open source platform as a service uh, type of thing. Um, it's very modular where you can add additional services into that, that, that marketplace that we present. Uh, so you can add things like this new Gen AI service we'll be covering, you know, databasing, database caching, messaging, streaming, any of the, essentially the, a lot of the Tanzu data services, uh, app auto scaling, things of that nature can plug directly into that, this, this product and, and runtime. And then of course we have the whole, you know, app application build pack support. So you can bring essentially any kind of uh, application to the platform and it will go and, you know, kind of take that source code and then kind of run it on the cloud for you. And you don't really have to worry about how, how it runs. It kind of wires it up and serves it up automatically. And then really what we're focusing on this, this concept of build, bind, deploy, and scale as, you know, the platform will build applications and will run them for you. We'll build like kind of best practice containers for you on your behalf. You don't have to really worry about what's going on there. 
uh, you can you can take that application and bind those bind those to services. So um, you can bind that to any number of these marketplace services that you'll see, and um, and really you can get to uh, get to production in, in a simple you know command from, you know for like we'll call it CF push uh, in, into production without a whole lot of issues and you know zero downtime updates scaling uh, you know. We have a great app auto scaler where you can scale your apps up and down as needed and things of that nature. And then really, uh, this is kind of my last uh, over review overview slide before we get into the, you know, the, the details of what's new uh, in these new versions. But just to recap, uh, and actually a lot of this data was, um, was updated and uh, validated with the, um, uh, enterprise strategy group. So we have a new white paper out there too that you know was where we interviewed Tanzu platform customers directly, and you know these these results or you know from their direct feedback. Uh, but again, with Tanzu platform and Tanzu platform for Cloud Foundry, we see we continue to see this this massive scale uh, and efficiency within within the operational concern. So you know we'll see uh, you know 200. Uh, developers being supported by one platform engineer or more, and you know that those you know platform engineers to developer ratios being really uh, you know best in market and and really allowing uh, organizations to do to do more with less. Um, a CF push where that you know we we get that simple command to production. Uh, developers spend more time coding, uh, more time working in business logic than dealing with with infrastructure. The bind gives you that that ability to um, wire your applications up. And then the platform has a great security story where a lot of things are zero trust by default. You get, you know, you, you get hardened OSS images, you get your base container images, you get this concept of uh, repave, repair and rotate where you could, the platform can rebuild itself from scratch. You can repair failed parts of it automatically and rotate things like certificates uh, or credentials and things like that when, when they need to be. So that again, all, goes into the operational efficiency and uh, you know improved security posture of the platform. Now if we look back just a quick quick look back of the the previous releases of what we call Tanzu application service um, you know we've done a lot of different different things in in this ecosystem uh, but you know I won't read all of this because this is kind of like an eye chart but We've made a lot of updates uh, about observability, um, you know, throughout, you know, and, and this is really kind of uh, covering, you know, the 4.0, 4 5.0, and 6.0 releases uh, as we roll into this, you know, this new release coming out here soon. Um, but, you know, we focus on end-to-end -end observability, um, which allows for a lot of additional, you know, uh, improvements around. Uh, whether that be the developer flow or the platform engineering flow. So we see a lot of the things with like the uh, aggregate syslog drains, the uh, open telemetry uh, getting exposed within the platform. Um, a, a big thing that came out in 6.0 was the ability to scale Dopplers and traffic controllers down to zero to really reduce the overall infrastructure cost of the platform. So a lot of a lot of uh, work being in to make the platform observability an easier and a more efficient flow. And then from a security perspective, uh, many, many things here to really, um, you know, to help out here. A lot of, a lot of work around certificates, uh, making that, that management process uh, easier. Uh, we introduced the Gen AI tile beta almost a year ago now. So we've, we've been multiple iterations of that and we'll see more of that later. And continuing to make the developer flow better with, with um, like uh, I think one of the big things too we released in 6.0 was the AZ Aware routing for Go router, so you can um, uh, have multiple um, AZs being live, but then the Go routers will will flow or will direct traffic to instances within its own availability zone, and that's kind of critical for application performance and and control. And then the ecosystem around what we call Tanzu Application Service. Um, you know the tiles. Many many releases have been updated. A lot of the Tanzu data services have gotten a lot of improvements around HA and, and uh, high availability, multi-site backups, and things of that nature. So a lot of stuff to unpack in this slide. I'm not going to read everything here, but I just want kind of wouldn't give a, a, a brief picture about what's all been going in you know the past uh, few releases before we get to our next release.
excuse me. And now, so we've announced last week, we announced the, 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 the launch uh, of Tanzu Platform 10. So Tanzu Platform 10 is our, our, our upcoming release, um, you know, in the, within this quarter. Uh, and we are kind of coalescing and aligning all of the Tanzu uh, products uh, into like the same versioning number. So you can see that the past, uh, what we call TAS releases, so the, you know, like, you know, from the, from the 2.x series to 3.0, 4.0, 5.0, 6.0. Now, what, what would have been uh, TAS 7.0 is going to be Tanzu Platform Cloud Foundry 10. So it's not going to be a long-term support release. But this is going to be, you know, essentially what TAS 7.0 was going to be. But we're aligning it within the, you know, the whole Tanzu platform, um, you know, umbrella. And we expect, you know, the next long-term support release will be around the same time of what, you know, TAS 8.0 would have been. So around the, uh, you know, spring-ish time frame. So just to kind of give you a heads up of how these the, the version is going to continue to, to progress. And some people have asked why 10. Well, uh, we needed to get to, get, you know, if we looked at all the different Tanzu products and their versions, 10 would align everything with the with the most current or the highest number. So we didn't want to roll any products back a version number. So 10, 10 was the first number to, to hit to align all the products. So that is why we jumped at 10. Nothing, nothing crazy there. Just to just try to get alignment without trying to have it back level a product or two. So. That is why it's Tanzu Platform 10. All right, let's see if we can progress. All right, now if we deep dive into uh, what's going to be happening, uh, we'll cover here in uh, 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 TPCF 10 uh, for short. Uh, we'll say that just so I can save, save some of my words here. But uh, again, uh, we have a common theme, uh, common themes across the across the uh, the game in here. Um, we're gonna do. I'm gonna. We're gonna do a lot of covering about the multi-foundation and new views, new consolidated views within uh, what we call the Tanzu Platform Hub. So we'll have a lot of. I can do some demos of what you can see within Tanzu Platform, and I won't go into you know all of these features line by line here. We'll show some of that in demo and, and cover some of those things as well. Um, we're also doing a lot of things with um, you know app security and you know uh, software build materials for applications so you'll see more um you know additional views within tanzu platform coming here to to make the that developer life cycle and uh, management of application uh, cves and things of that nature in, in a better way um we've d introduced uh support for the obvi load balancer so uh we can go ahead and directly you know wire into some of those uh, what we call like kind of uh, have the Go routers register as the kind of back end endpoints for um, Avi virtual IPs for the platform. Additional improvements with uh, Ops Manager, uh, a lot of updates around generative AI. I'll cover that in another section here. And then a lot of updates around, um, you know, the whole simplified developer experience. We can cover that as we go, th go, through, go through those as well. And then again, uh, many updates within the ecosystem. And just for the for the sake of time, I I'll, I'll try to cover those uh, topics as we as we go through the slides here. So if we look at the multi-foundation platform observability. What what's the real story here? Uh, so if you look at you know Cloud Foundry today, right? We'll have mul you know uh, customers may have multiple Cloud Foundry foundations. They may have some Kubernetes clusters. Um, and you know you kind of get like one view today, maybe within Health Watch or App Metrics or things of that nature. Uh, but you know as we build this this functionality out, we wanted to add a uh, concept of multi-foundation observability. So you'll see that here, where you can add you know observability of multiple foundations into to one view. Let's see if I can get my click-throughs to work here. And then additionally with with Tanzu Platform, you get multi-view of Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes clusters with you know Tanzu platform for, for Kubernetes as well showing up within the hub. So you can you can get your 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 views of Cloud Foundry and your Kubernetes clusters all kind of in one place and have that all working together. Obviously, uh, you know, we're making more observability and more integrations down within VCF and having Tanzu, you know, Tanzu platform and CF being more 
uh, have additional integrations with VCF and be more overall kind of cloud aware. And then as we go up the stack, we are adding the visit, adding that additional application, uh, you know, visibility and especially around the spring ecosystem, as we have a lot of, we're getting a lot of metrics and things today. We're just making, making that more visible and easier to, to uh, use. And then as you know, this gets rolled out, well, we'll see uh, smarter troubleshooting and 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 uh, integrated kind of um, support view within the platform, uh, Teams platform, to help out you know overall support tickets and things of that nature. And then last but not least, uh, as we have our you know control of the full application lifecycle, where we can kind of expose this as well. Uh, additionally, kind of down the road with with different services and things as we uh, roll that out. But we kind of have all this data that we're getting kind of collecting as it is already we can kind of bubble that up and expose that as as things progress. But that's kind of like the overall kind of vision as we go from one, like the concept of we think of one Cloud Foundry foundation today to n number of foundations and then wiring that up to, you know, Kubernetes clusters as well. Really having that holistic picture of the entire uh, kind of application platform estate or, you know, the entire Tanzu platform, that type of thing with with multiple runtime support and things of that nature. Hopefully that made sense. That's kind of my uh, a slide to help demonstrate how how things are getting built out in multiple directions and, and kind of tying, gluing everything together. But now uh, I'm going to do some live demos. I have some backup slides and some additional slides to to dive into uh, as uh, we can go in here. But let me kind of break out of here and get into get into that mode. And while I switch over, if anyone has questions, feel free to feel free to ask. I see any questions come in just yet, Nick, but uh, just a, a, a brief plug. I think we do have all of the Spring One sessions that were previously, that were presented um, and streamed live on our YouTube page. So I'll include oh. that here. I think uh, there may be one or two from you there as well, Nick. So just oh, a perfect. plug for you there. <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah, that's, that's good, to, it's good to see. So so if we look at, I am in the Tanzu platform, right? And we're going to kind of view how is some of this new Cloud Foundry integration uh, being exposed, right? So if you go into the very, and does the, is the screen big enough? Should, do I need to zoom in anymore or does that look okay? It looks good to me. Okay, yeah, perfect. So like first and foremost, we can go to this concept of foundation management and add multiple foundations to, um, to get wired up. And what does that look like? Oops, behind the scenes, uh, you essentially install uh, the CF Hub collector on your foundation, on each foundation, and wire that up with some uh, essentially some credentials and things. And that allows, um, if we drill into the Tensu Hub configuration, uh, this is telling where to send metrics and how to register to, to Tensu platform. And that's, you know, all those metrics and things just start magically getting, you know, sent up to, to the Tensu Hub, and that's how you configure it. So you, you have to start this configuration within here and then this this view will give you uh, ids and things of that nature to then put into the cf hub collected tile on your foundation and you do this for each uh, essentially each foundation you want to to register with the team platform and then kind of kick off that process apply changes and then things will start start propagating and going from there so that's just a quick view of how would you register with us and then two when we talk about tanzu platform so there's the Tanzu platform SaaS version of this is like, you know, the, you know, kind of cloud provider version of this, but they're also, you know, we're also working on building the Tanzu platform self-manage for those folks who can't use a SaaS product and things of that nature. You could run uh, a version of this within your four walls, so to say, uh, so to speak, and, and be that a self-manage instance of, of Tanzu platform. So just to, to cover, cover that, that concept as well. But for the sake of this demo, I'm using the SaaS version because, you know, hey, why not? And I have multiple foundations. There's actually, this is a shared organization. So there's people registering foundations, you know, up and down as they do different testing and things as well. So we have some data being pumped into here to, to show that. So we have our Cloud Foundry collectors ready to go. Uh, and I can go now into infrastructure and then look at my foundations. So we're starting to get some overall uh, foundations. We're getting alerting about what's potentially going on within the foundation and to, to, to check things out. Um, I can you know, start to see uh, things like uh, Diego memory used, uh, where, where it's installed, how many 
AIs and SIs are being deployed and things of that nature. So I'll drill into one of these here. This is one of the this is the actual the foundation I'll be doing. Excuse me, some of my other demos on as well. So we'll drill into that and see what's going on. But uh, a new view we'll, we'll see is what we call this topology view, where we're starting to to get data of the the you know the TAS or TPCF organizations and spaces. So we start to, we start to do some logical and topology mapping there, which is which is useful to just kind of you know keep things uh, you know mapped so to speak. And if I can scroll down here, we can see uh, I've actually triggered alarm. So uh, UAA request latency triggered on oh, earlier today. Uh, so something's maybe something's going on in there. Uh, I can check to see if I have any certificates that are about to expire, things of that nature. I can look at all of my orgs and see how many AIs and SIs and spaces have been deployed within that. So that you know, this is just some high-level, uh, nice, nice view uh, to see here. I'm actually going to click on this alert because I've, I've never seen one of these before. So who knows where this will go? But I'm uh, really kind of interested here. Um, oh, it looks like all right. So interesting. So I'm I'm getting uh, this metric trend here, and it looks like potentially had some some latency within some of my Go routers here. Uh, you, know, you can see it's mapping to Bosch VMs and routers, and I don't know, maybe I had a uh, interesting something happen within this time frame to to trigger some some latency. So I'll actually look into that a little bit later here, but that's just an example of. You know, you can get some alerting and metricing uh, within the system, uh, just kind of automatically here, going on on the fly. All right, so we'll go back to my my main foundation view, and uh, we can see our kind of Bosch director Bosch director health check. So all of my VMs are uh, currently healthy. My director is idle. Uh, you know, uh, Bosch re resurrector is enabled. You know, just typical things going on here that you'd see within like ops manager and things. And then additional uh, detail. So uh, there's a lot of the the overall health watch views or, or, or tile metrics have been merged into this. And uh, if you uh, haven't seen uh, our podcast, we run a Nikki Pike and I run a podcast called Cloud Foundry Weekly. And we actually had Jacob Newton on the show a few weeks back, who was the one of the lead PMs for some of these um these views and things being built with the multi foundation so he kind of views some of these 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 uh uh this as a a, a way to consolidate health watch at metrics metric store and even potentially telemetry within you know the cf hub collector and tanzu platform so you could potentially get you know go from four tiles to one to to help out there as well so you'll see uh, a lot of the you know traditional health watch style views in here as well so you can see job, running app instances, health, you know, all these typical things that you would see within some of those Grafana dashboards on uh, HealthWatch. But the beauty of this is this is all rolled up into a singular solution and you don't have to run a, a HealthWatch and deployment per foundation, things of that nature. So you can see my CF CLI health. So all of my smoke tests are going good. I can push, I can log in, I can start. You know, stop. You know, nothing going crazy here. My my push durations are looking good, so everything looks pretty healthy here. Um, overall, platform health. Uh, my 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 SQL Glare cluster, all nodes are online. No problems there with my database for the platform. Uh, auctioneer stats, things of that nature. So, I'll, for the sake of time, I'll probably go through a few of these here pretty quickly, just because there's a lot to cover here. Uh, you know, a, a key key metric here is Diego capacity. So obviously. If you've been managing foundations for a while, you, you, that's something you have definitely kept in mind just to make sure uh, you know, your Diego runtime does not run out of space for, for more apps to be deployed. Uh, Go router, very similar here. So you know, making sure your routers are up and, and everything's looking good here uh, would be good too. 500 nares, definitely uh, something to keep, keep in mind for as well. So again, these are very, uh, very similar to some of the HealthWatch style views. Logging subsystem, measuring the the fire hose and things of that nature, uh, and then again some ops manager status, so that's good as well. Uh, all the different uh, overall certificate views and things of that nature, and I'll deep dive into logs here. So we're actually getting platform logs in here too, which is I think really cool. Um, actually, when I first saw this, I didn't expect this at all. So the platform syslog drain shows up here within this view, and you can look at all the logs coming in from the system. 
uh, and thing, things of that nature. Uh, if we actually go back to Ops Manager here, uh, we can see where that actually shows, how you actually configure those logs um, in the TAS tile. So this is where you make use of some of that new logging architecture we've been working on and developing uh, for the past few releases going back and in the system logging. So we have our sys main platform syslog drain for, for the TAS tile going to our internal hub collector service. And then we have also defined uh, aggregate syslog drain as well. So we're getting platform logs and app logs going to this as well. And I'll, I'll show that here in a second as well. But that's a, I mean, it's a great uh, value prop uh, in case you want to potentially, uh, you know, pull back or, you know, augment um, some logging uh, just for maybe some troubleshooting or just maybe even just to, you know, uh, have some centralized logging view that does that you don't have to send to a third party and potentially, you know, spend a lot of money there as well. So this this may help you save save a little bit of money too as well. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really nice to see. And last but not least, I'll go into the app view and then we'll move on just because there's some some other topics to cover as well. Alrighty here. So if we go to applications, go to apps and microservices, click here. So one thing too, uh, we have this concept of business applications within Tanzu Hub, and that, that is essentially a, a cloud foundry space. So that gets mapped as a cloud foundry space um, within the system. So I should be able to look for a space called Gen AI. Oh. Maybe, maybe not. I don't. Okay. Well, I'll I'll pick on one of these that I see, and maybe I've not named that correctly. Maybe open. Ah, all right. So we need to look for the name of the actual app. But here's the Gen AI samples business application. So if we if we drill into Open Web UI, and we can see, so we we are starting to get that the topology view as well for our applications with what business application or what space it's in. Here's the open web by actual, it's an actual uh, Cloud Foundry application deployed. And it actually has a, a multiple map, map, uh, mapping services or backing services. So I'll just open, I'll expand this here view. Uh, and we can see that this is uh, multiple service instances are mapped to this app. These are actually all large language models with our Gen AI service. Uh, I'll get into that in a little bit here, but you can see that, that additional mapping uh, for that whole kind of contextual view as well be be beneficial. And maybe we go back here. Let's go back to our open web UI app. And we can see logs as well. So hopefully this, I should have tested this and maybe generated some logs. Um, yeah, so we can see uh, app, app logs as well. Uh, just, you know, normal uh, like logs within the app. Um, let's see, maybe you can see a, a chat here, like 200, you know, 200 requests, everything going okay. So you can see your platform and your application logs running within the, the system. Uh, now this 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 app isn't a spring app, so we don't have the advanced kind of spring, spring telemetry being shown here as well. But if you were to push a spring app with the, the right uh, kind of uh, telemetry uh, things configured, uh, you would we'd see some additional data as well. So uh, let's. I, I'll go back to uh, some of the slides here, and then we'll kind of move on. But uh, that kind of concludes the first demo here. All right. So back to slides. I'm going to skip through most of these slides just because we covered them a lot already. Uh, so we kind of saw that multi-foundation view alerting. Uh, uh, yep. A topology view. Um, again, if we wanted to see. Uh, uh, you know, integrations within VCF. We saw some of that already. Uh, I don't quite have the VCF plugin yet enabled on this demo environment, so more to more to come on that. But definitely check. A, you know, we're doing a lot of work to have that holistic infrastructure view be available. Uh, again, you know, we're going to have that consistent app view where you see apps for you know, uh, you know, for Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes both in, within the same view. Uh, and this is where some of the view I couldn't quite show, but we, we're getting some additional. If you have Spring applications, you can get those red red metrics, JVM metrics, uh, kind of similar to what you'd see in app, app metrics within the platform today, and then you know have that be uh, aligned with logging as well that you saw within the platform. So additional additional data coming out of the the, the platform there to, to really help out. 
and you know we saw the app and platform logging uh i didn't show the the smart smart troubleshooter but uh, again you know as you could potentially see see that alert you can then wire that up into uh tanzu support as well so we actually showed an alert but you know i don't i don't have the way to to you know to to call a support with with this environment either so uh just a just something to keep in mind how that would potentially play out within your organization uh and then again too there's concept of runbox as well where you could potentially have like known examples or we saw this issue then we can make a runbook or like here, here's how we documented and, and process this this issue if it ever showed up again type of thing so we've already done the demo we've already covered the observability slides um and again some of the this again i don't have a live demo for this but we can see some of the uh, security center view, uh, you know, where we can start tracking CVEs, and that's where we're starting to pull in some of the uh, uh, SBOM or bill of materials coming out of the Cloud Foundry environment. We, we, you know, we have that data where we're, like, the V2 build packs, we're going to be able to extract an SBOM out of and then roll that up within Tanzu platform. You could also potentially just manually extract that SBOM via like the CFCLI, I, I believe. Uh, don't hold me on that. Um, but, you know, that, that, you know that functionality is being built or you know, released within Tanzu Platform 10, and then shown within the the hub as well. And again, you can kind of drill into a CVE as it gets flagged, and you know see what potential you know apps or AIs are impacted. Like you know obviously Log4j got brought up. That's a that's kind of a a very classic one to to look for type of thing. But all these different uh, kind of flags to see if you know are you know Log4j is in this in this app. You need to fix it. Uh, you know, patch, uh, update the library version, you know, you can upgrade the build pack and the stack to, to help uh, mitigate these issues as well. So uh, quick cover to here too. Um, I got, got about 30 minutes left. Um, just uh, Tanzu Platform 10, so additional um, certificates as well. So uh, and, uh, overall improvements, um, again, this uh, continuing our story around making the overall platform certificate management process even better we've done you know throughout many releases many different optimizations there and i would say it's you know doing doing this type of management of certificates in another platform is either unheard of or, or not even possible so uh again it's it's great to see we continue to make this even better process but just having this in general is nice to have because uh you know certificate management in general is just something we have to do nobody really likes to do it uh, it's just it's just the nature of the beast, so to speak. But um, we're getting additional, you know, the ability to uh, regenerate the SAML identity certificate from the OSFAN UI, and you don't need to make API calls uh, to that. So uh, again, making that process easier for that specific certificate. And then another thing too is uh, compiled CPI releases. So um, we're removing to uh, compiled uh, CPI releases, and uh, that uh, will, in, 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 you know, in short, reduce the overall time for apply changes. Uh, so having the, the, the CPI itself be pre-compiled uh, will improve uh, improve those, or actually shorten the duration of apply changes, which then gives platform engineers more time to do other things and things of that nature. So a uh, uh, quick update that we want to call out there. Now let's get on to uh, the Gen AI on Tanzu platform. Uh, we'll have some demos around this as well, and then uh, we'll go from there. So I'll give it, uh, have a few slides to, to jump in to, to cover uh, what's going on and then do some demo. Okay, um, so what's the you know, kind of goal here, right? Um, and I had, a, I had a slide from one of my other talks that I should have brought it in here, but if we look about it a year ago, uh, the, you know, I was, had the, the pleasure of leading a, a team at the VMware Hackathon. Uh, Long Win was our kind of lead engineer on the project, and he had the idea to wire up Cloud Foundry and this, you know, hot new generative AI thing that, you know, hit the market a year or two ago, right? And we were able to, you know, get a working MVP, and we actually uh, you know, got a, we won first place at the hackathon. And if we fast forward to about, I guess, mostly a year now, uh, we, you know, we have a product that's in full public beta, and we've launched that, you know, it will launch GA within the Tanzu Platform 10 timeframe. So we'll be uh, going GA here when Tanzu Platform GA is with the uh, with the Gen AI on Tanzu Platform tile. So uh, kind of cool story there uh, to go from idea to to prod here. Um, but what do we what do we focus right? So it's really the tiles uh, wired to or 
model to make uh, platform engineers have an easier access to deploy uh, these large language models or generative AI within within their Cloud Foundry foundations. We support NVIDIA GPUs and CPUs. We actually have a pretty robust integration with VMware Private AI Foundation as well. So if you're using that, we can actually wire up directly to those those instances as well. Um, so we kind of mix and match whatever what makes sense for you. Uh, and then, you know, obviously when we started this, the, the concept of having private large language models, well, you know, like that private cloud safe AI experience was like first, first and foremost. But as we talk to more and more customers in our beta program, cost savings is becoming almost just as important or, or you know, like second, you know, right behind uh, security. Uh, and that's because these public models that we see, and we actually have customers uh, running apps on, on both, right? And they see with their public models as they hit scale, because these public models call like charge for what we call per token. So think of that closely as a word. And you'll see all these words get passed back and forth on these models. Those are all just getting billed incrementally. incrementally. Uh, so you can easily wind up you know, generating millions of tokens on some of these models within a matter of hours. And that could easily generate uh, uh, not not fun costing on on the public cloud uh, meter. So uh, just uh, you know, as we see uh, that rollout, the uh, TCO uh, has become more and more uh, 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 as important, uh, almost just as important as you know having secure and private, keeping your data to yourself to your own private models and not you know sending them off to one of these publicly hosted models and having that potentially, you know, leak or get get included in its training training data set and being able to be queried by anyone in the world. Additionally, uh, we, we supercharge the marketplace with generative AI, so we'll see that here too. So it's really about getting developers safe and easy access to these models where you can just easily consume them and bind them to your applications just like we do any other service. What does this really look like behind the scenes or under the cover, so to speak? So we have our, you know, our traditional TPC effort task foundation. You deploy Spring AI apps or or any really app. You know, it doesn't have to be a Spring app, but obviously, uh, Spring AI makes it really easy for existing uh, Java ecosystem to plug into this thing. Um, and we have a, a Gen AI proxy within the tile, so that the the right hand box is like all the tile components. Uh, we're actually going to rename the Gen AI proxy to Tanzu AI Server. And the AI server is, you know, going to allow us to do additional things like, you know, content safety and things of that nature around, um, you know, how uh, how data gets passed and forth between these models. So we'll see more of that here in the future as well. But essentially, this this AI server or AI proxy will then brokers between different large language models which we deploy, uh, whether that be on VLM or OLAMA on CPUs or GPUs on these worker VMs. We can also use Postgres and Gemfire and Greenplum for what we call embeddings and overall data pipelines, because obviously your own data is important in this in this in this in this uh, flow. So having that 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 be safe and accessible, so we reply, we can easily add additional service excuse me services there as well to to help help your overall AI story. And additionally, if you wanted to use this with VMware Private AI Foundation. Uh, we can swap out our Bosch kind of manager, Bosch deployed v, uh, LLMs with uh, deep learning VMs deployed within the VM or private AI stack. Uh, and those those run what we call NVIDIA M. And then those are typically assigned to really some of these really high end GPUs. So if you're lucky enough to have access to a private AI foundation with some of these top tier uh, brand new, you know, like here, I, we're actually talking to some some customers that are getting I was pretty jealous of all the gear that they're getting shipped into them. So um, if you have access to that, we can easily plug into that ecosystem and help uh, help plug in there. And you, we can even you know, call existing deep, uh, deep learning VMs that have already been deployed. Let's say if you want to kind of share within Teams. So I can show that quickly how that would work out. Uh, but again, just, you know, we're here to, to, to help you integrate what, what makes sense within your architecture and kind of just, you know, help choose the best of all worlds, so to speak. So we that's kind of an overall view. Let's go see some, I'll show some application views, uh, architectures, and we'll, we'll do a little demo and then go from there. So I'm not gonna show Spring Metal, I'm gonna move on just for the sake of time. So I'm gonna show that open web UI application that we looked at the logs within Tanzu platform. So it's, it's actually a Python application. 
it's, it's a UI application kind of written to, to front a lot of these different models. If you wanted to, in this demo, we're not, you can have a user database via, you know, stored as a Postgres database, and then have all the documents that we upload, uh, like uh, presented via like an NFS share within, within Cloud Foundry. Um, you know, we don't have that. I don't have that wired up today and even potentially integrate this with SSO, the uh, app SSO tile as well. So there's some additional integrations we'll probably build out in the future, but I just wanted to call that out. But within the, within the proxy, we're presenting a, a large swath of models uh, on CPU, on GPU, on VLM, on Olama. Uh, this diagram then represents a VMware Private AI Foundation model being presented as well. Unfortunately, my private AI foundation environment expired last week, so I'm just using one of our other environments, but you can easily tack on additional uh, VMware private AI deep learning VM models as well within this architecture. So let's, let's, let's show this app really quickly and then we'll move on to our next one. If I can find, all right, so, so yeah, open web UI, we saw that here. So let's refresh. I'll log back into Apps Manager. Go into my org. So I'm gonna go into the Gen AI Samples org and you kind of see how that, that maps to that, that business application we saw on the Tainzy Platform Hub. We'll go to Open Web UI uh, and we can see all the different services wired up. So I have all these services wired up. These are all large language models getting presented to the application via service bindings. Uh, and within the, if I went to our marketplace and I looked in the Gen AI, these are all options I can add to my application, just like any other service. So that CF bind uh, uh, create service uh, just kind of gets wired directly into there with, with no issues there. So as a developer, I can, you know, my platform engineer was able to pick and choose what models made sense for our organization. And I can, you know, choose what, what's available to me within my app. And if we go to the app view here, and I go into admin settings, uh, we can kind of see here where how these are getting wired in. So uh, these service credentials, you get past a, a proxy URL. So that's a, a, the Gen AI proxy URL within my foundation. And we get a, essentially a connection string or a, a URL and service key, a virtual key to every model. So we're actually doing virtual keys as well. So you, um, you can provide, you know, like if you provided that uh, VMware Private AI Foundation model, we can do a virtual key so you don't have to share the actual AI key, open the open AI compatible API key within the deep learning VM to your developers so you can kind of control that that access as well. So my app has been wired up via service providing service bindings. All these credentials just got added in the environment variables automatically. So I just you know you know pick and choose what models we're, we're good to go for the sake of time. I'm not doing the full push experience here. But if I go to workspace here, we've actually uploaded some documents as well. So last week for me was really busy and I was trying to make somewhat of a practical use of this technology. So I created a document and I, I put all of my all of my schedule in this document of, of my different schedules for, for different formats, whether that be like the booth duty or like my sessions or like customer meetings, you know, other meetings into just one document. And I just wanted to see like what 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 it could do, right? So I've got that for contextual reference. That's actually being stored as what we call an embedding, and is in this case as in memory. So the, this application has it in memory, but it's stored as an embedding. And then I actually, you can actually pass it prompts. So prompts are pretty useful for these models as well to kind of help help guide the model and kind of direct it in a way. And if you look at this prompt, it says Nick is very busy at VMware Explore 2024. Please help him keep track of his schedule. Do not make up answers you do not know. That's really critical because some of these models get really, uh, really wordy, and uh, if you, if you leave them un, uh, unguided or unprompted, they they like to just write books and novels of you know very, uh, very crazy things. Uh, and then you can do for fun. I said, please answer in the voice of Yoda. And other demos, I said, please answer in the voice of a pirate or something. So you can kind of just just for giggles see what happens here. Uh, and uh, we'll do this live. Uh, let's see, let's see how things go here. So we'll do Llama three one, and uh, Let's pass, pass it my prompt. So I'm gonna tell it that. Uh, this model might need to spin up. So the first response might be a, a slower too. So busy one, Nick is scheduled to keep track of I shall. Well, you know, that's saying, I don't know like what events, you know, what's going on? Like, like can you share with me some data? So now we can pass it this, uh, this document we created. 
and it's a list out um, all sessions Nick has on uh, Wednesday. Now this has happened in the past, but uh, based on this context, it's got dates and uh, everything as in the past. So now it's listing out uh, the sessions it has. Uh, it, it got them all right. Uh, two sessions, three sessions. So it changed its mind halfway through. Uh, but you know, you can kind of see. Uh, obviously, these things are still uh, can make mistakes and things. But then we can actually see the citation. So here's what that actual what the actual document looked like. I didn't put any really structure in this document. I just threw a bunch of bunch of stuff in here. And uh, you know, here's the three sessions for for Wednesday. So they got all three sessions, uh, things like that. So that's just a a uh, quick example of how you could potentially use some of this, you know, obviously you'd have your own documents and, and write custom applications with things like Spring AI, and things of that nature to, um, you know, control that and have more prompting and more guardrails. And even further, as we progress this, you know, things like Tanzu AI server might help with some prompt, prompt, uh, you know, security and, 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 and uh, guidance and things there too. So, Quick, quick view of what, what we look like there. Um, I can do one more demo on this app just because it's fun. So another thing too, uh, besides chat and embeddings, we can do what we call like a vision API. So let's see if I can upload a file here. Uh, ooh, let's see. Go to demo images and we'll upload this image. How many people are in this image? Uh, so again, another plug. If you haven't seen my podcast, uh, Cloud Finder Weekly, we're live every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So, uh, but yeah, so we passed an image. I asked it, how many people are in this image. There are two people in this image. Now, this could be something pretty useful for, let's say, uh, if you had an app on your uh, that scanned, took pictures of products, and you could use this vision. LLM to help identify that product, uh, maybe like a, a next generational product search with a potentially a lot less resources. Because in the past, those type of searches required huge numbers of uh, you know like elastic search clusters or like really high end, high response data data services that maybe you could augment that with an LLM and really kind of reduce that type of thing. So I will uh, Go back to the other slide. Okay. Um, I know I'm running a little low on time, so I'll, I'll do one more demo here and then probably wrap up. Um, but let's go back to the slides. So, uh, and a, a large group of people uh, uh, have been working on updating the Acme Fitness application. So there's a whole team within the, the Spring Spring folks and Tanzu Lab folks, and uh, had helped me out a lot. So I really appreciate that. Uh, and we've, we've we showed this this new Acme Fitness application. It's an existing kind of polyglot deployment of a maybe a real world situation of like you know how would this look besides some of these kind of like demo fun apps. Um, essentially, this is updated to add a, a new service called the JNI Assistant, which is essentially if you're not familiar with Acme Fitness, it's like an e-bike store. So you know we're getting a lot of customer conversations like hello, uh, you should do something with generative AI, and then they come to us and they're like. How do we do stuff with generative AI? So this is an example of you can take your existing retail site and then add an AI assistant or a chatbot assistant that's that's high, finely tuned for your environment, uh, and this all runs within the platform here. So if we go back to Apps Manager here, uh, let's see here. We'll go to Acme Fitness. So we have all the different Acme Fitness uh, services loaded, ready to go here. So the different microservices, uh, we have uh, many different uh, things on, on the back end for services being used. We have multiple large language models, one for embedding, one for chat uh, being used. We have Spring Cloud Gateway. So we have our API gateway for all of our services ready to go. We have Spring Cloud, Spring Cloud Registry, single sign-on, post, multiple Postgres databases, Redis, uh, a bunch of different services that to really kind of simulate or uh, demonstrate how this would actually work, or you know, obviously it's not quite real world, but a little bit more uh, of a complex application architecture, but not not an uncommon view on our platform with our customers. So we have many different backend services, we have many apps ready to go. 
So we go to Acme Fitness here. Let's zoom in here. So this is our e-bike store. Uh, we have a bunch of you know random uh, random bikes, and we're selling. You know, I have no idea if these are real bikes or if these are all just you know made up bikes. I assume they're real bikes. I don't know. It'd be a lot of design work to make these up. Uh, but if you see in the kind of top right hand screen here, we have this new Ask Fit Assist. So this is really this new microservice with uh, what's called generative AI. Uh, uh, being loaded here, and we can ask a question. So, uh, what bikes are under a thousand dollars? And this is maybe this is more of a helping shoppers make decisions type of things within within the platform or within the actual application here. So this is this is processing, um, and we can see. Uh, here are a few suggestions. So it's suggesting different bikes uh, about what to see. So it wants me to, to uh, uh, a light set for commuting, uh, things of that nature. Um, uh, yeah, so you would see these are different ways to uh, show how you know generative AI can work within your application. And I've got a few more minutes to, to cover some of the other slides here on other categories. All right, uh, I'm gonna jump because uh, just to, to cover here some more things, uh, and then we'll see here. All right, so additional deployments uh, we'll cover. Um, so canary, canary deployments are being introduced uh, within the platform. So um, you can essentially roll out a single instance of the new app, and you know it's kind of a, an enhancement to the overall CFCLI flow. But deploy Canary, uh, have some type of you know user interaction to say yes, the Canary passed or no, it's not like on that new version and then roll, do a rolling uh, Canary style full application deployment once that's been approved. So Canary style deployments are being added within Tanzu platform Cloud Foundry 10. So that should really help out um, that developer flow and being able to uh, release a new version and do some you know, light style testing without potentially you know, impacting a large percentage of user traffic, things of that nature. Additionally, uh, rolling deployments within the platform have been approved. So essentially the there's been a max in-flight parameter for that. Um, before, uh, when you wanted to do a, a rolling deployment or like a rolling restart, uh, you would you would only do one app instance at a time. And on smaller applications, that's not a big deal. But let's just say on application on apps that have thousands of instances deployed, I used to work in a place where we had one of our main kind of front-end apps would run thousands of AIs, and we couldn't actually use this feature because, uh, or if we did, it would take a, quite a while to roll out. Uh, one AI at a time uh, on th when you're when you're working through thousands could take quite some time, and you might need to to go faster. So this allows you to set in in flight parameter to like you know X number, you know, and whatever enough for you case. So maybe it's ten or maybe it's twenty, whatever makes sense for you to have enough. Basically, roll through your application deployments or, or restarts and things of that nature without taking too many AIs down, but having that go in a much you know speedier process in in the event of you have large scale apps deployed with you know many hundreds or thousands of instances so as a uh, previous platform engineer having this run into this exact this exact issue uh, i'm excited to see this roll out and this should really help out um you know large scale applications or just even general you know it doesn't you don't have to necessarily be in that that you know huge scale to hit that either but this will help out overall and then this in flight uh, max in flight parameters being added to a lot of the overall CFCLI commands to really help out and go from there. And last but not least, uh, I'll cover some of these things here. So, uh, you know, the the tiles within Cloud Foundry, uh, a lot of uh, improvements are going in, in, into place with the MySQL and Postgres tile. So a lot of improvements around backups, point in time restores, streaming support with backups, you know, just a lot of overall operational and platform engineering efficiency within the tiles to really uh, expand their overall production uh, readiness. You know, we've got replication and uh, everything going in there. So a lot of good stuff being baked into the the, the Postgres tiles and things of that nature. Uh, we have event streaming support within RabbitMQ. So that's another uh, good good feature as well uh, to, to, to call out and focus on uh, uh, many other th things as well. And one other thing I, I like, I know we're running low on time, but one thing I would like to, to point out too is that within Tanzu platform, the uh, uh, these tiles, the, you know, any, any essentially any service um, 
uh, is included within the overall Tanzu platform SKU. So you now have access to these these tiles. If you don't, if you didn't have a a, a, a what we call a service instance license, it's now included within the Tanzu platform SKU, uh, with the exception of Gemfire and Greenplum. Those are all uh, standalone SKU still, but we're talking Rabbit, Postgres, uh, MySQL, uh, Valky, or Redis. Those are all now included within the core platform. You don't have to worry about maintaining a separate license for you uh, for them as well. So just a just a, a benefit as well. And uh, upgrade planner, uh, we're making some additional investments and improvements within the upgrade planner. If you're not familiar with upgrade planner, it's a site that you can plug in, uh, pull data out of your ops manager, plug it into, you, and you can pick and choose what versions and what tiles you're using and how you want to upgrade. Uh, and it'll give you a step-by-step -step guide of what to do, what, you know, how many upgrade, you know, step-by-step -step process, how many deployments or how many apply changes you need to roll, what order uh, to ensure um, overall, you know, you know, you know, make sure you're not breaking anything in the overall upgrade process. So uh, more, uh, more uh, work and investment is getting into the upgrade planner to help build this, uh, you know, out even more so just call out to upgrade planner if, if you don't use it but we're, we're seeing additional investment there as well last but not least i'm going to call it the integration with avi load balancer so again as a previous platform engineer he used avi load balancer in front of multiple teams of application service or tpcf foundations having the ability to have go router be auto registered as pool members within Avi uh, Load Balancer VIPs is is pretty exciting. Uh, it's very similar to how uh, it works within uh, you know the hyperscalers, so like you know the Azure, or the AWS, or the Google Load Balancers. You can auto wire in now with Avi. Uh, obviously, that's you know, we're playing into the uh, you know getting the VCF story better, the on-premise story better, but Avi works great too for global lo load balancing as well across uh, platforms, across clouds. Um, so, uh, and I think we'll be adding some additional features too with Avi. We can't quite announce yet, but uh, seeing more integration with Avi makes me excited. Uh, I like, really like Avi. So it's Avi and, and TPCF uh, work well together. So good to see that. All right, I know I'm at time, AJ, but I am here to address any questions if we have any questions that we need to cover. Yeah, great. You know, we did have a question that I think you did cover a bit during the presentation, but I can read it if maybe there's additional insights that you have. Sure. It says, um, how does the new Gen AI capabilities in Tanzu platform improve app development and benefit enterprises? Hmm. Yeah, so I, I, it's really about um, providing kind of a safe, secure way to, to do um, uh, generative AI or in build intelligent applications. So, you know, uh, we can run models or call private models, uh, you know, to keep, make sure that the, the data that you're processing, the data that you're sending to these models stays within your four walls. Um, you know, there's been multiple instances of people using these public services. Like uh, one example, I can't remember the company name, but essentially, Somebody was using it, one of these models to to do meeting meeting summarization notes for like six months, and then if you know the service and you know the company name, that six months of data is all in their fine tuning set of that public model. So you can ask anybody can ask anything about that those company the those meeting notes that it summarized for six months. So things of that nature to like present prevent like you know just you know leaking any data and it either until you know accidentally or whatever and you know period and like a lot of organizations have just full full stop blocked a lot of those those models from even being accessible so that that's one case of allowing you know and like we make use of um the open source model so that we kind of pull those in and run them and then you can you know wall them off and and make make them you know completely kind of air gap so to speak if you want to you know make sure there's no way that that data can leak out so to speak so that's one benefit and just um having the benefit of not having to worry about the token spend is is another big one as well so hopefully that helped clarify that answer yeah i think that did and i can i think those are the questions that we had unanswered here um, okay. today and i do want to just say a special thank you to to you nick i know like uh coming right off the heels of exploring spring one uh, to get here just a few days later to present i know it's been a lot we appreciate the time and 
just the insights that you have. And, and most of all, thanks to all of you guys for attending today. In the chat, I did include the links to the recordings for the Spring 1 sessions and the VMware Explore sessions. So you can look up Nick and you can watch his sessions there um, as a recording and then check out all the other great sessions and um, content from everyone else that presented last week. Uh, any last thoughts before we head out, Nick? Uh, no, and I guess if, if you like this type of content, again, uh, check out, I guess, cloudfinderweekly.com. I do the weekly podcast, so we have a lot of, you know, a lot of things to get caught up on. We actually did a live show last week at, at Vegas, so we actually had uh, some of the community join us uh, for, for kind of a panel type discussion live, so check it out. But yeah, that's, uh, that's where you can find me uh, uh, when I'm not doing webinars here, so thanks for having me. What days of the week are the are the uh, those podcasts? Uh, yeah, so uh, we Thursdays uh, around one p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when we start our stream, but then we also uh, package it up as a podcast format, uh, so you can get that on like you know your podcast player of choice, and then they're on on YouTube as well if you want to you know catch the stream uh, later type of thing. Perfect. We'll include a link in the post of that email here as well, just so folks can find that. And be ready to listen to you tomorrow, 1 right. p.m. Eastern time. Yeah, right. awesome. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. This has been recorded. will be available on demand shortly after the end of this presentation. Look out for the post of an email with links to the Spring 1 sessions, the Explore sessions, and uh, the Cloud Foundry Weekly with, with Nick. And uh, who else? Who is your co presenter? Uh, Nikki there? Pike. Nikki Pike, yes. So it's, it's, uh, it's they have a great Nikki. image. <laughs> Nick and Nikki. Perfect. Yep. Easy. Uh, not. Uh, can't forget that. Nick and Nick. Yep. We appreciate yep. the time, Nick. Everybody else, we hope to see you guys at our next event. Bye. Thank you.